So the early 2010s was a pretty exciting time for hip hop. It's where you saw the end of the bling era of rappers and where you saw the new school guys like Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, Mac Miller, you know, people we kind of take as household names now. And a lot of these new artists like the Kendricks and Coles used YouTube as a platform to make their art form available. It had become easier than ever to get your music noticed by people simply because you could upload it to the internet. And this option opened the lane up for not only hardcore rappers like Kendrick and such, but also open the lane for like these satirical comedy rappers. I'm talking rappers like Little B, Ice JJ Fish, and that leads me into who I want to highlight on in today's video. Satirical comedy rapper Krispy Kreme, aka Froggy Fresh. I had to fight my whole life. I could beat you up even if you had 1,000 knives. Even if you had infinity knives, I would punch you up into the air like a kite. I remember Krispy Kreme being like this huge sensation back in 2012, 2013. Almost all of my friends knew about him and he was just this goofy kid making these hilarious rap music videos. And then as years passed, I slowly lost touch with his content and he just kind of vanished. So in today's video, I want to ask the question, Whatever happened to Krispy Kreme slash Froggy Fresh slash Tyler Cassidy? They're all the same person, but let's get into this one. So first and foremost, I want to say Krispy Kreme is Froggy Fresh. Froggy Fresh is Krispy Kreme. They're the same people. I'll explain why that's such a thing later in the video. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be referring to this guy right here, the target of the video, as Froggy Fresh. He's Froggy Fresh. Let's get into it. So Froggy Fresh, whose actual real name is Tyler Cassidy, had actually been making rap songs years before he started the Froggy Fresh project in 2012, admittedly making hardcore southern rap tracks that just weren't going anywhere. And then in 2012, Tyler had the idea for the Froggy Fresh character, you know, this five foot one, super goofy, living in his mom's basement, heavy southern drawl rap character, and he launched that project in 2012 with his initial music music video on YouTube called The Baddest. Cause I am the baddest of them all. If you ain't about money, then I don't mess with y'all. Y'all think I don't get girls, cause I ain't very tall. If she see my stacks, I bet you that she calls you know that I am. <laughs> the Baddest features Froggy Fresh in his mom's basement with his best friend Moneymaker Mike as they're toting around guns. As Froggy spits these super boastful bars about how Beyonce thinks that he's cute and he thinks Jay-Z is lazy. I bet I got more money than Jay-Z. Compared to me, Jay-Z is lazy. Plus Beyonce thinks that I'm cute. It's okay, Beyonce, I think you're cute too. Now this video didn't get any traction until about a week past where a user named Pants20 posted it on our videos on Reddit, of course. The post title was this kid is a lyrical genius and would get thousands of upvotes, basically creating the viral sensation of the Froggy Fresh slash Krispy Kreme the baddest video. Posted in April, by the time November came around, this video had over 6 million views, which is pretty impressive by 2012 standards. And within this April to November time frame, Froggy Fresh's video had been featured on Ray William Johnson's Equals 3 show, which Ray's show was like at its peak at this time, so this just gave Froggy Fresh even more visibility and brought even more people onto the baddest music video. And if I may, quote, from Sir Krispy Kreme himself. I dare you to try and punch me. My face is so hard, you'll say, ouch, you crunched me. Ouch, you crunched me. So with Froggy Fresh's character and music just being so out there, a lot of fans were wondering, is this guy actually for real? Like, is he really this bad at rapping or does he really look this strange like surely he couldn't be this clueless that was part of froggy fresh's plan and the whole shtick was to give it enough believability that this could be a real person but the whole time he's doing it it's just an act so with froggy fresh's momentum being at an all-time high being featured on all these blogs being featured on equals three and just getting so many views from his video he got an opportunity that nobody saw coming 
Froggy Fresh was invited to go on Tosh.0's Web Redemption segment. Now Tosh was killing it at the time on Comedy Central with Tosh.0. This show heavily featured videos pulled from YouTube and internet sources and Tosh basically gave commentary over them. But he also had a segment called Web Redemption where he would invite somebody that was featured in a video on Tosh and he would allow them to sort of do an interview with him and get to know them and try to understand what was going on in the video segment that Tosh reviewed in a previous episode. So Froggy Fresh agreed to join Tosh on the segment and they did an interview together and we got this out of it. Well, it's an honor to have you here, Crispy. I'm a huge fan. Thank you very much, Daniel. How long have you been in the rap game? I've been in the rap game for like, since I was just born. Immediately took to it? I just, since I was born, I came in and I was just rapping mostly. Tell me about growing up as a little donut hole. Mostly play with action figures or video games. How'd you get so good at rapping? I just listen to Tupac and Nas most of the time. Okay, so if I were to give you Big Ear Tupac, Krispy Kreme is going Tupac. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Talk about when your mother passed away. My mother didn't pass away. Okay, good. That question would have been very uncomfortable. Froggy Fresh also did a song with Tosh and they debuted it on the show. So it was just this massive debut, this massive spike of visibility for Froggy Fresh and an opportunity to get fans that he never would have had otherwise. It's me and Dale Tosh and we're chilling in LA. Doing push ups and getting girls all day. And yeah, we're never ever going back home. Cause now we're best friends and we'll never be alone. After his appearance on television, his popularity skyrocketed and he had more fans than ever flocking to see his videos on YouTube. As 2012 ended and 2013 began, fresh off the heels of his Tosh performance, he just began putting out song after song, banger after banger. His fan favorites like Denzel Washington and Best Friends came out at this time. Best Friends being this song where Froggy Fresh sort of elaborates on his friendship with Moneymaker Mike, who is like the skinny guy who always appears in the videos alongside him wearing the Mac Miller shirt. This song introduces the character James as well, which ends up being the series long antagonist in the Froggy Fresh universe. Froggy Fresh was creating this whole like lore within his Froggy Fresh project. Plot lines would go on from song to song. There would be recurring characters and such. Moneymaker Mike was a fan favorite. Like you would expect him to appear in at least every video and many fans of Froggy Fresh would often leave comments like Moneymaker Mike is the shit and like they love him just as much as Froggy Fresh. So it's interesting how he built this universe almost the same way like Filthy Frank built his universe around an interesting cast of characters and such. So 2012 and 2013 overall were just massive successes successful years for Froggy Fresh, putting out two albums in 2013 and most importantly getting a John Cena shout out. What do you think of Froggy Fresh? Putting a new glaze on Krispy Kreme. Uh, I think he's he's very talented. Uh, I saw his uh, a few of his videos. I was surprised by his content. I think he's very talented. I think he's a lot more talented than people give him credit for. It seems like nothing could go wrong at this point. But Froggy Fresh would get some news in 2013 that could potentially leave his whole empire crumbling before his eyes. Now I've been referring to Tyler Cassidy's character in these rap music videos as Froggy Fresh. But up until this point in the actual timeline of events, he had been going by the rap name Krispy Kreme this entire time. So obviously Krispy Kreme is a donut company. So once Krispy Kreme the Donut Company finds out that this five foot one guy toting around guns in a music video and doing all these ridiculous public appearances, would Krispy Kreme the company be okay with a guy like this representing their brand who is basically directly using the same spelling of their company name? No, they weren't happy about it. So Krispy Kreme the company contacted Tyler Cassidy and was like, look dog, you gotta change your name or we're gonna sue. So Froggy Fresh posts this video on his channel in 2013 and sort of explains the scenario. Now he stays in character the whole time and he says Krispy Kreme the company called his dad and told him that he had to change his rap name. Here's a segment from that video. So then I have to, um, change, I have to, I have to change my rap name? Because Krispy Kreme, the donuts, the donut factory called my dad's house and they said that, they said that I have to change my rap name because you can't just copy names like that. So my dad said that I do have to change my rap name or else 
or else that could get in a lot of trouble. So being forced to change your name at this point in your career is like, it seems like it would be a death blow to many because you've gotten so much notoriety off your brand. It's going to be tough to keep the fans around if you have to change your entire branding to a new name. So Froggy Fresh came up with a few name ideas. The first one, of course, being Froggy Fresh. We've got Jelly Bean Jack. We've got Candy Cane. We've got Lil Country. We got White Chocolate. Now, as the story goes, he ultimately decided on Froggy Fresh and kept going with the project with that new name hoping this wouldn't affect his viewership or his success in the future. It was something that had to be done though, because legal action from Krispy Kreme could have ended the whole project right then and there. Now unfortunately, part of the deal between Krispy Kreme the company and Froggy Fresh was that he had to delete the Krispy Kreme channel and start up an entirely new channel which he could post his music on it only if he edited the parts and namesakes that have the Krispy Kreme company. That's why the Krispy Kreme rapper YouTube channel is no longer available. The Froggy Fresh channel exists and has many of the Krispy Kreme era songs in it, but whenever there's a part where he says Krispy Kreme in it, it's censored out or there's something over the video that scribbles out Krispy Kreme text. Krispy Kreme 2012 Froggy Fresh 2012. So after the name change in early 2013, Froggy Fresh would just keep going full steam ahead, putting out fan favorites like Christmas and what I consider his artistic pinnacle, Dunked On. I grabbed the ball and I passed it into Mike. Mike caught the pass, fake left and went right. He drove through the line and he threw it off the glass. I couldn't believe my eyes, he was running so fast. Caught the pass in mid air, then he threw that boy down. Nobody could believe Froggy Fresh would go on to post 12 more music videos onto YouTube from 2013 to 2016 and in this time span he put out two full length albums and even did a tour in 2016. It was like you couldn't stop the guy. But then after April of 2016 he just kind of vanished and stopped posting videos leaving fans wondering what the hell happened to Froggy Fresh? Where did you go? His videos were still getting hits but after April of 2016 there wasn't any content to speak of all the way up until 2018. It was a two year period of absence. Then finally, subscribers were notified of a new Froggy Fresh video. But this one wasn't a music video or any kind of in character update. This was a video of Tyler Cassidy basically explaining that he was done with the Froggy Fresh project and was moving on to pursuing an actual serious music career, making folk and country music. Yo, update video. Here's what's going on in my life, kids. Okay. I have been writing pop tunes and soul tunes for a, about a year and a half now. Three and a half years ago, I finished the third album for the Friday Fresh Project, which is unreleased. We have those five singles released that are out there, which is like Stolen Bikes 3, Zombie in the Basement. Uh, what else was there? Uh, good guy shoes. It's those five singles that don't have an album yet. Well, the album has been done for forever, but I just uh, hadn't released it yet because I was waiting. Because you know, we normally do we do a video for every uh, song, but we never uh, got to the videos. My little brother went to college. He ran the camera, and everyone kind of guy grew up and grew out of it. And I kind of just stayed around the area for a couple years and did absolutely nothing and didn't know what to do with my life. So anyways, I've also just lost uh, so much interest in the project. It's just not that much fun for me anymore. And I've kind of outgrown it. Um, mostly because like the people that were involved in the project, we've all gone separate paths. So it's kind of, it just ain't there anymore. Uh, we're getting my brother-in-law and we're getting everything, all of the props and everything from the first two albums and all of my gear, which was like cameras and microphones and everything up on uh, getting it ready to post on eBay to get rid of everything from the project, like everything from the good guy shoes to the Freddy Krueger costume to the camouflage crap from Best Friends 
to the guns from the baddest, like everything you could ever imagine from the project. We're preparing to post on eBay. At this point, I probably have almost enough for two albums and I'm writing every other day. So this is like my new thing. This is what I'm pretty much in love with. I just want to write songs and uh, it's like, but not hip hop anymore. I'm just, I'm so bored with hip hop. It's just not fun to me anymore. I guess that's pretty much it. So I'm closing down shop for good on the Friday Fresh project because everything that I had planned for the videos is it's just we're just not gonna get to them. Anyways, peace out. It's kind of sad to see this, but it really reminds me of like Filthy Frank moving on to Joji and completely abandoning his project. Sometimes you just grow out of something. It's really hard to tell that to fans, but they just have to appreciate the good times you gave them and watch you grow. It just seems so bizarre to me though, to watch someone sort of announce the end of a brand or a music project that so many people beloved and just announcing the end of it so candidly. Now it seems like Tyler Cassidy must be doing pretty well financially. I'm sure he saved money from the Froggy Fresh project, but all I can say is I wish him the best of luck and I was curious where the hell he went and I'm glad I did the research and found out. I hope if you were a Froggy Fresh fan that this video could give you a little bit of closure because it looks like he's never coming back to the project. So who would you like to see me do a whatever happened to video on next? It's pretty interesting to see where a lot of our old internet idols end up going in the long run. But anyways guys, this has been a wavy web surf video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And you know, I gotta make sure you guys check out my partner in crime cool shirts. They just sent me this dope aquamarine looking hat. You need to go on their website and check out their designs. M you know, maybe purchase something cause your boy gets a kickback from it. So click the link in the description box, check out cool shirts. I would greatly appreciate it. Anyways guys, peace out. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at the Wavy Web Surf. Hey, and join the Discord. We're having some great conversations in there. And if you want to be super homie, donate to me on Patreon. Peace.